But uh, so we are now in the mm -hmm. music and consciousness, and this is supposed the after show lab of the Wisdom Factory. Mm -hmm. We are, I'm Heidi Hörnlein, this is Mark Davenport, and we are the Wisdom Factory, and we have on Google Plus a show. And we just had a show with Jessica Romische, pianist, and a wonderful teacher of, you could say, what is that? What would you call it? It is music. It is music. And it's getting into relationship, getting mm -hmm. into contact, getting mm -hmm. into the wonder of, she, of relatedness. She, through, through duets. Through she, duets. She communicates with people who aren't in any way necessarily musically trained. And with her classical background, she can create a framework where they can express themselves musically and they're amazed that they can play. <laughs> but it's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, service. Oh, can. here she is. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Under their own name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now she came in. On her Let other. me just... But that's, that's, very, that's very close to uh, how I work or how I think and it's uh -huh. again in the same stream it of on? consciousness it is about to come in yeah. yeah and we can we can talk about uh -huh. that just now uh -huh. okay and please send a tweet out and please send a Facebook message out mm -hmm. and uh, using consciousness oh that's me uh -huh. <laughs> hello Lab. Talking about music with Kate Bob. Oops, where uh -huh. is it? Oh. it? It should yeah, it should come up her name, no? It doesn't. It did. It is? No. It, Bob, uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, uh, there it is. Here she is. And because we want to have some people to come into and talk with us about uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah. Is she there? Still trying. Still trying. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Yeah. And uh, Jessica, you should hear us now. And if you, after a while, that don't receive, uh, succeed, then you might come it out again from here, clicking on the little cross and come in again. Click on the little X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Try that again. And sometimes it takes time. It depends on how the uh, connection is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you can see us. Mm -hmm. uh, you see us. Mm -hmm. And you see Kate Barber, who is in Scotland. And he is a classical yeah. singer. Oh! <laughs> we got it! <laughs> My old, technology. Sorry, this is my old computer, so it's not not very uh, is not very good. <laughs> yeah, it has a little bit this audio thing which we were talking about, but mm -hmm. it's okay. This is a more informal thing what we are talking about. Yeah. And I was presenting you, Kate, a friend of mine and classical singer, and we got to know. I will. I think it was via LinkedIn a year ago, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Talking yeah, about I the different, um, yeah, more about than a year ago. More than a year, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's true. We, you were on our show in 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 July last year, also. And where are you now, Kate? Where are you calling from? I'm in from? Scotland. I'm in Scotland, Scotland. in our uh, oh, yes. beautiful cottage uh, beside mm -hmm. the fire, and it's very cold and snowy and sleety outside wow. <laughs> and I, I would also say when you say classical singer I would say uh, that I am kind of beyond the categories and I am mm -hmm. if classical I'm classical light and very much into the healthy voice and true voice tuning I would say <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how we got to know each other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I present to you Jessica uh, because Kate didn't see the the show yet, and Jessica is yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> I think you can say the same thing as Kate said, only <laughs> instead of voice, you say piano. <laughs> Absolutely. It's yeah. lovely to meet you, Kate. Nice to meet you, Jessica. I think that I read a little bit about the show yesterday, and it was very interesting. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I started off with piano. That was my first mm -hmm. love. <laughs> it's a great where have where has your love gone in the meantime uh it's an interesting thing because uh i had a lovely piano teacher who was a very much uh, another fa father figure to me and he was a lovely person uh but somehow the pedagogical uh ways you know in during the communism it was very much about elitist talent if you were not absolutely brilliant uh somehow not my teacher but the rest of the school the music school gave you uh indications that you are not as good as you should be uh, yeah. So I think that I absorbed it. We had a very hard training and, and stuff. And the anxiety and uh, perfectionism started to destroy my enjoyment. I think it's a story of so many musicians. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's why I started singing, because I felt much freer. Uh, but funnily enough, uh, after finding my voice, now I started playing the classical guitar and I might go back to the piano because as I changed as a person and unblocked a lot of things, uh, I have a different relationship to the, towards music and instruments. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen <laughs> and it's quite nice. That's true, absolutely. And I really encourage you, Kate. I mean, you're right. And I'm so happy to be honest that um, the the talk that we just had over this last hour is going to be on YouTube where you can watch it because this is exactly what we were talking about, everything that relates to the experiences that you've had. So I And you know what happened? Sorry that I'm uh, just uh, it's another thing that happened to me, and uh, uh, Heidi knows about it. I started composing music, and uh, it's like I, I have such so much joy in it. But of course, I'm not a great composer. I am at the beginning. I have loads of ideas and enjoyment, and but I have to be kind to myself because, of course, I'm a, a child composer. You know, that uh, development stage in music that I should have experienced as 10 years old or 15 years old and so on. I'm experiencing now when I'm almost 50. Well, I mean, I think it's fantastic that you're giving yourself that opportunity. And if, if there was any encouragement that I would, would offer, it would be that you allow yourself to experience the love of what you do in a way that's as free as possible from any prejudgment. And um, that what you're doing is you're, you're, you're saying to yourself, which is you know, the beauty of what you just described, I'm giving myself this opportunity to simply fall in love again with music. <laughs> and that's the only criterion is love <laughs> the love of the sound that you're creating yeah because we don't have to to be in the first row in the in the biggest concert halls mm -hmm. the halls to to make music you don't have to be the first violin no nope. we don't have to mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I think what you say, Kate, is and what we have experienced too, the, when you do the classical route of a classical musician, 
you know, you often, I mean, so many people who have done uh, music uh, university, they hate their instruments and so many give up. So who made it then finally into the orchestras or be a solo singer? I don't know how much music is left for them. Some come, come back maybe after a while, but some never do. And that's also because I think because let's say classical music has lost a little bit of the attraction because it, the heart is mostly missing. Unless you have really good musicians in the sense that their whole personalities um, and they can transmit that unless it's so uh, it's very very difficult and you know often uh, not trained musicians when they do a concert uh, there is much more of that liveliness and much more of, 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 of the heart and can touch you know that's really it's very very true I mean people people have said to me that their experience listening to some of the the students that I've had who have Down syndrome have been more exciting and inspiring to them than going to a, like you said, Heidi, to a concert hall to watch a, a, a standard, you know, established um, concert. It's more exciting. It's more alive in their own hearts and minds. And you know, mm -hmm. that's what I've heard from people. So, I can also say that, that, that I don't actually go to a lot of concerts myself because I hate being disappointed. <laughs> I, hate, I hate paying for being disappointed. <laughs> but I can tell you that one of the concerts that I did go to some years ago, it was probably already at least 20 years ago, um, was a pianist by the name of Miroslav Karjowski, so he's a Polish, I think Polish or Russian, Polish maybe pianist. And he lived yes. to be 101. He lived to be 101. And the concert that I saw, or 100, the concert that I heard him play, he played when he was almost 100. And it was one of the last concerts that he did. And he was performing some of the Chopin Nocturnes, which are some of the most divine pieces of music ever written for the piano and gem in general. And he played those nocturnes like he already had a feeling for heaven and a feeling for this earth simultaneously. It was like there was a very thin veil between this reality and the next. And those nocturnes, which are night songs, so that's the literal translation of nocturne, were truly nocturnes. So even if you hear that quality once in your life, it's enough. <laughs> and if you feel disappointed most of the rest of the time, don't think that you're um, crazy or uh, spoiled or um, misled. You can trust. You can really trust the deepest sense of what you feel when you listen to music and, and the interpretation that someone is, is doing. So you can be the ultimate music critic, whatever your background. Yeah, and the thing is, normally we musicians, are, and I include myself, we are so caught up in doing things right and not playing or singing the wrong notes. And so um, this other part of what you say, interpretation, also that often is sort of prescripted and you should do it in this way and this way. And X, X Y, Z has done it in this way, so you should do it as, as well. So we are so full of expectations that there is not much left to our creativity and unless exactly. we come to the moment where we allow ourselves to you know to do what we do <laughs> in our unique yeah. way we will never enjoy 
really enjoy making music. It is more a triumph that we have done it. And I really remember yeah. that, you know, <laughs> after the concert, I've got it, I've done uh, it without uh, any error. I mean, uh, it was even, people said they liked it, but, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I'm going to let the musicians here chat among themselves. We wanted also to chat about consciousness. What can you say about music and consciousness? What does music do when you listen to it and your consciousness? I don't know how to answer that because uh, I can go for days, weeks without turning on some music to listen to. You know? mm -hmm. uh, and and, I, and it, when, when I do, then I am taken to a new place. But I have to be taken to it. It's not a place that my consciousness goes without uh, the stimulation of music itself. And I, I like uh, many, many different kinds of music, and uh, the attachment to them is not uh, necessarily a, uh, with any theory of music or, or any discipline. Uh, it's more an emotional attachment to some phase of my life that there is some connection with. And so, I mean, in my life, of course, there's always going to be a, a special connection with the, the music of my high school and early college years, uh, which was absolutely unconscious listening, yeah. just listening and responding and without any, any, any kind of thought, any kind of uh, rationale going on. I just liked it and so forth. But, of course, I can go to other kinds of music, too, and appreciate that. Uh, and some of sometimes very strange kinds of music. Uh, uh, I like country music uh, when I'm in a country mood because it expresses certain roots in my family way back, and it's a, it's a connection uh, with them. Uh, I, I like exotic music from other places uh, in small doses because it gives me some kind of feeling for how those people are, what, what kind of world they live in, uh, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, so I, I don't have any real, the, the consciousness, what, what should I say about it? Because we usually think about consciousness as being lower or higher, um, and that doesn't necessarily apply for, uh, for, 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 for music for me. Can I respond first? Or second. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I think you said one important thing for me in this context is mood. Mm -hmm. Music is operating on the mood, and there are different sorts of music which create different moods. We didn't talk about that before in the... In so you're talking about states, not... Levels. States, yeah. absolutely states mm -hmm. of consciousness. And then when we do meditation in the evening, we have nice music on, and this helps to mm -hmm. go into different levels of states of consciousness, mm -hmm. different levels of states of consciousness, <laughs> I can say. Okay, that's what I say. Yeah. I leave, give it over to you. And there is another person here, Josh Mills Music. And if you want to join us, you can come in. Can we hear? Pardon? Can the other person hear? Is it, I see him yes. that he is here. No, he's gone away on the, the on the top. Oh, you can see there. these uh, oh, little uh, icons, and you see who is in. Okay. You know, and he was here up to now, and now he's gone. Hey, we I scared him just, off. I was just curious, Kate, if there was anything else you wanted to share, you know, about your musical journey, because it sounds like you're in a sort of you know transitional. Where you're I am quite, in, it, it, yes, in a, in a transitional uh, position because uh, I was coaching people who couldn't really sing and mm -hmm. that coaching gave me so much and I stopped doing it. I, I'm doing it only occasionally. And then that gave me uh, time for developing my own inner needs and hidden <laughs> hidden uh, potential but also i was very interested in the healing power of music so for example uh, 
I was very interested in different type of tuning, you know, the uh, according to Fibonacci numbers, right. uh, music and mathematics, you know, the resonance with the universe and the tuning that we are using. You can find all the information on the internet about it and also uh, all the different frequencies uh, uh, belonging to different chakras uh, are presented on YouTube and you can listen to it. And I am interested in that and also I have a Tibetan bowl here and I use overtone singing. And I am doing sometimes uh, kind of home healing sessions for for my friends and family uh, where i sing the overtones and do the tibetan bowl and people are receiving these uh, these vibrations and i mean i shouldn't be really speaking about it but because i'm not taking it so seriously because i'm just giving it out of uh, joy and generosity it's not but they they do <laughs> have improvements you know like uh, frozen shoulder or whatever symptoms you know and they feel much better afterwards i don't know how how long it lasts but they feel that they have um, cleared out something so we have uh, an echo now i think we need somebody needs some earphones and just to say, I'm sorry, I'll have to be leaving in just in a few minutes. Um, okay. But I wanted to say to Kate that I'd be very happy if you felt you wanted to contact me through my website. I'd be delighted to, if there's anything that you feel that I can in any way help or support you, let me know, you know, or if you want to share more about about it, about your experience, I'd be, I'd be very happy to. Thank you, Jessica, and I will contact you. Yeah, that would be lovely because I can feel in your intention in your heart, you know, your your intention is beautiful. I mean, I, 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 I'm not surprised that people have the experience that they have that, you know, because of the way that you're, what you're bringing to them. So I just warmly welcome you if you'd like to share more about what you're doing. Um, and I want to thank Heidi and Mark for making this opportunity for me to meet you and you know, to have been able to express um, what I was talking about. And I also really encourage you the, the, the video, the video replay. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be great, Kate. So, I, and anybody else who is interested on this, on this, uh, on this chat. Um, we covered so much, right, Heidi? It was just fantastic. So I really encourage anyone to, to watch the video replay of our talk. Yeah, it was a wonderful show. And we will do it again. We will do more. Absolutely. Are you st still here, Kate? Yes, I am. I am listening. I'm just taking in. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, because I don't see you anymore. Yeah. It's okay. I can see oh. you. You can hear us, right? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you very well. Good. Oh, that's good. Okay, Jessica, I think we should do things like that uh, to try to find more um, audience who is interested in music here. I mean, this is the first time we do, we do it. We should do it. Ah, here she is back. We, we should do that more often so that we pop up, because there's not much in music going on on this platform. Yeah, I would love yeah. it, Heidi. I think it's a great mm -hmm. idea. And I'd be delighted and, to do that. And we will find people who are interested in time, you know, and then we, we, we send it out to, 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 to Twitter, and we can also send it out in, in the other platforms. Because, you know, so many people like music, but they are shy and they think, ah, oh, uh, I cannot do that, and I cannot do that, and I cannot do that, and maybe we can, we all have more or less the same message, at least in the same direction. Yeah. Maybe we can, Absolutely. by our examples, tell them that they can. Absolutely. I Absolutely. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And okay. thank you for this beautiful opportunity. And Kate, it's wonderful to meet you. Thank you for tuning in and joining us. And and you know my website, so please feel free to pianobeautiful.com. So please feel free to um, to connect with me that way. Yes, I will okay. revisit the the post on uh, the Wisdom Factory because I think everything is there. Is it right, Heidi? Everything is there. Yeah, you will find everything there. That's fantastic. Yes, thank you very much, Jessica, for your support. <laughs> Absolutely. Lots of love to you and Heidi and Mark. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much. Thank you Take for care. being with us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. pleasure. Bye. 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 Oh, it was a shame that we could hear her so badly. Uh, it was a very disturbed um, sound, but now we can talk yeah, the, together a yes, little bit. Yes, but the message uh, went across. I could hear what she was saying, and mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful what she's saying. Yeah. You know, and I think we we are called to how to say to support a different music culture, where music becomes the expression of ourselves, and not something you you do because you do it, but this becomes an expression of your inner inner life. Let's say. You know, and my it, book on the wings of the voice. That mm -hmm. was the main message. You just said it. That is yeah. the message yeah. of my book. <laughs> yeah. And that's how we found each other, no? Because mm -hmm. of the similar message. And when you look around, normally, I mean, I had a choir, no? And uh, uh, it was a church choir. So people are quite conservative, let's say. And I tried mm -hmm. to to bring something else in, some other way of of living music and not only doing it all right. I mean, it's nice when it's right. It sounds nice, but to have more joy in doing it, you know, to, to open up. And it was really difficult to do that. Some people would, yeah, but mm, not really. We are so conditioned in, in what music has to be, you know. So Remember, I see there's somebody. Uh, you, huh? you, okay. you had a, a very nice... Uh, a conversation with the Canadian writer yesterday. Uh, if you can remind me, remind me about her name, the Jessica? Canadian writer. Just no, 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 no. Ca Canadian writer. Uh, it was uh, with the connection. Hang on. Ah, yeah, name. yeah, Marilyn Harding. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Harding. And the way she was speaking, it was something fantastic. And I was just thinking, this when when people get into this point of uh, consciousness or development and state, uh, it doesn't matter what medium you take. You can write, you can dance, you can paint, you can just cook, for example. And it become a kind of creative and spiritual practice. And it really, what you are doing is actually uh, sending waves of love through the medium. And uh, so if you were in with people who were already positive and knowing about the, the negative habits we have, because that was wonderful what you mentioned, mm -hmm. so much... Uh, negativity is in rooted in us it's unbelievable you know this uh, no saying and this fear this opposition to everything uh, and it's even within the people who are trying to be the, the positive ones <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. it's even it's worse i was one of them and then i discovered that i'm very sad and i'm trying to put this smile on and it doesn't it's not true yeah yeah, yeah. So i think that uh you need to or we need to also connect with people who already have understood 
this thing that you know within our society there are so many restrictions and then we are kind of poisoned by so many things not only food you know but the the, the thinking the fear the, the dramas and of course uh, whatever you start doing uh, when, when you are doing music and then suddenly you activate all your traumas and dramas from from school and from other music teachers it will be yeah. there again yeah i mean we can kindly uh, offer a help but if the person doesn't have any experience of working with these fears and knowing how to release them they won't make it in my mm. opinion that, that is uh, and with my coaching experience that was the main thing with some people they just couldn't make it a few people couldn't make it through that yeah. because the the traumas were too deep and the uh, protecting mechanism was too strong yeah 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 i know i don't think uh, what we did now with lawrence these things could help that they could uh, the gold key release they can they can open up these things but probably not the normal ways not like our let's say our coaching our goodwill is is a, a fine thing you know and our expertise but it's difficult to arrive at these levels of uh, ingrained drama i yes, don't think we can go there and the last coaching experience i had just two or three weeks ago uh, the participants we, we were about 10 people they loved it mostly men and they they said something very interesting <laughs> they said but this is isn't this uh personal development through singing yeah it is he said he said you know it's an interesting thing because it's both it is really mm -hmm. singing but if you want to sing freely and you know and, and express yourself in it you need to grow as a person mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it is a co-arising. It's at the same time, if you allow it. If you don't allow it, if, and that's what I wanted to say before, if you just want to learn to sing in this way, like you study uh, language, uh, words of a different language, then you neither learn well to sing, in my opinion, nor you develop, no? But uh, if, if, if people are open to that, then it is both and at least as in my opinion you know and i think we were talking before about music performance you see in what level of consciousness or, or what state of consciousness people are if they have a personality then the music is i mean a deep personality the music is touching you if it's not if they d d don't have gone into the depths it's just blah 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 it, it's just going in here and out here you know so that's what my experience is sometimes it's uh, much better to listen to uh, actors who are singing mm -hmm. because they were they have been working uh, at so many levels with uh, emotions and their own consciousness and the bodies they have to mm -hmm. work with goodies much harder than the singers, which is very strange. Yeah. And because singers are half musicians, you know, they, they, they go heavily into the music theory, but nobody wants them to, to play the instrument very well. It's a very strange thing. Uh, I don't know how the training is now, but what I went through, it was a bit disjointed and also it, it was not, a, not really helpful, you know. Because as you know, uh, for example, in the choir, you know how many activities are involved if you want to become a good choir singer? It's uh, cognitively an uh, overloading experience. You have to mm -hmm. first develop a, a, a few skills separately. Mm -hmm. Then you can put it together and to think about uh, very ambitious choir leaders who invite good voices, uh, good uh, people with good uh, musical ear, intonation and everything, and then they want from them 
to receive the first first time uh, the song sing it without warming up sing the words as well do the intonation and if there are any any big problems you know you just sing through it uh, but only the as they call it we, we are just singing through it and doing it so badly of course you do it badly because everything falls falls out your breathing uh, you know you probably sing in a foreign language <laughs> uh, yes, you to, yeah you, you you read the music uh, you are tuning into your uh, harmonies because you have other singers around you and then you also read the uh, foreign language at the same time and you have rhythm as well yeah i mean uh, it's complete overload and then uh, of course your voice if you are not a perfect singer who's got everything already under your skin automated you cannot you know you are just and and this happens all the time with these half professional uh, choirs and i think it takes a lot of joy out of out of it because people get tired and they go there after work i am very surprised that a lot of good choirs are still holding and it must be a really a real passion deep passion of the people to to be singing it's a deep passion because uh, it's a hard work otherwise mm -hmm. yeah do you agree with me yeah i'm completely with you kate i mm -hmm. think i'm done for today we had this wonderful show before and there's a person coming in uh, there was on the wisdom factory on youtube a show about music about duet about the paradigm of duet and how to help people to go into how can you say into a different space by by music and if you want to go there the wisdom de is our website and there you find uh, the new shows while uh, the the replays they are on the wisdom factory video uh, youtube channel and i think for today i would close here i'm a little tired <laughs> it's late at night and kate we we stay connected